expect things are different. I promise the builders so much, but I don't deliver after that. And I just leave them around. So I asked him, how long have you been in construction? Two years. That's it. That explains it. You can't even go five, six years successfully. You know, here is a situation of someone says, hey, you work hard and I'm going to buy you, say something like a tablet. I'll buy your tablet if you get results. They perform and then you buy them Panadol. They say this, I knew, I knew you were going to get a migraine after working so hard. Then you change the story. You lose integrity. You don't need to lose integrity with your children. Keep your word. If you're being paid school fees 20K, 30,000, 50,000, you can choose to buy them something that they need, say in their university, like a laptop or 50,000, because they must value what they're given. A reward must be valued by the recipient. It is not you, the giver, to value the reward. The recipient values the reward. And this brings me to our 12th point, and perhaps in my opinion, the most important pillar in preparing our children for an ever-changing world. And this is speaking the future we want to see in them, the power of the spoken word, believing in children. Bon Blyde, deaf and dumb, when she finally learned how to speak, Helen Keller eloquently said it this way, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will break my heart. And I believe there's some validity to that observation. You know, names and words are never innocent. They carry some power inherent within them. My mom had a brother called Moreu in my mother tongue. Moreu means the drunkard, Mlevi. And true to his name, this man died of drinking. He died of drinking. His name confirmed. I have a friend called Grace. She has a brother called Kavoa, pronouncing her Kaba language. Kavoa translated to me, the one who's always beaten, Kanai Chapo. And guess what? Chris tells me, this young man was beaten at home and at school almost on a daily basis until he ran away because his name suggested someone has to kick him. This is a school in Yamira by name Nyakimincha. Nyakimincha is a goozy name for the tail. And the school has never disappointed. There's a neighbor in school to Nyakimincha known as Nyakoiba. Nyakoiba is a goozy name for the thief. Guess what? KCSC results this year were cancelled, courtesy of cheating examinations. We have a school between Kakamega and Bugoma by name Ebuchinga, pronounced in some lawyer direct. Ebuchinga translated to me the place of fools. And the rest, as they say, is absolute history. In fact, we had a school in Nyeri County known as Kiagoma. Kiagoma is a Kikuyu name for the devils. Believe me, three years ago, they had to rename the school because names are not innocent. Names carry in them power. A friend of mine is a very senior government official. One time I was doing some training when he was a CEO in a given parastato. And when I was doing that training, I realized that almost all his brothers are riding very high in this country and even beyond. When I asked him, he said, hey, come, come, come talk with my father. I'm the chair of a board in a neighboring school. Come talk to my teachers and parents. And that evening in you, sir, talk to my father. As I spoke with his father, a retired primary school teacher, I began to appreciate twice so much success in one family. He spoke a great future into their lives. A man of no great means, but who understood the impact of words. The end result is that all his children became successful. When we speak to prisoners, they tell us the same thing. I'm exactly where my mother said I'm going to be. As I grew up, mama said, one of these days, you'll end up in jail. Here I am, as mama perfectly predicted it. The power of the spoken word. By far, the largest tribe in Ghana is known as the Ashanti tribe. They have a unique way of naming their children. They name them after the day of the week in which the child is born. The children born on Monday have a given middle name, Akwasi translated in the Ashanti language to mean kind, peace-loving, generous. Either by coincidence or otherwise, it's estimated over 75% of all CEOs in Ghana are the Aquasis. Now, the children born on Wednesday have a given middle name, Aquaku, translated to mean rough, arrogant, terrible, mean, violent. Guess what? Government statistics reveal that over 75% of all crimes in Ghana are committed by who? You're right, Aquacus. 
the power in a name. Be careful with the names you give children. If you're not a parent, if you're planning to get married, if you're planning to get a baby, be careful with the name you give the child. His very name, Jesus. See this other mission. He came to save that which was lost. Be careful with the names you give children. You cannot perform in a manner that is inconsistent with the words you use on a day-to-day -day basis. Words are the best indicator of what is stored within you. I'm going to end this show with a very interesting story. There were two Johns and they were classmates. One was nicknamed the Good John because he did his homework in time. He helped the other kids with the assignment, was a class monitor. And needless to tell you, he told in the line of academics religiously. Then there was another contrasting John in the same class. Never did his homework in time, bullied the other kids, was arrogant with the teachers, and needless to say, he told in the line of academics religiously. Now, one afternoon, the mother of the so-called bad child went to school. The teacher on that duty thought there is no way the mother of the bad child can come to embarrass herself in school of necessity. Therefore, this must be the mother of the good child. In the midst of that confusion, the teacher began to speak. Oh, John is such a delightful lad to have in class, the favorite of the teachers, the darling of the students, doing his homework in time. And don't, 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 the teacher continued. The mother was confused. She knew at best her son was disaster. But for strange reasons, she chose to believe the message. Went to the son and said, you know, son, I'm so proud to be your mother. You see, mother, mothers are peculiar people. Mothers are unique people. Mothers love children for who they are. Some fathers love children based on performance. So she chose to believe the message and communicated the same to the son. He lowered, of course, the message to a level he could buy. But said, I'm so proud of you, son. You're improving tremendously. Teachers are so positive about you. The boy was in tears. And the following day, still in tears, he went to the teacher on duty and said, Moline, I want you to know that I deeply appreciate what you told my mom about me yesterday. Never before have I heard my mom saying that she's proud of me. I want you to know that I'll do anything humanly possible, anything within my means, to make my words and those of my mom come to pass. An average day student in just a single semester ended up as a C student. And finally, when he start, sat for his 12th grade, perhaps equivalent of our form for here in Kenya, in our 84 system, he ended up being the top student in that school. In fact, he became the top student in the entire history of that school. But this is what I want you to hear. Although the teacher accidentally motivated him, it was not intentionally done. It is in the midst of confusion that the teacher motivated the boy. What's the message? The spoken word is like a spared arrow. It cannot be recalled. Once you release those words, they will accomplish their purpose, whether they were released intentionally or accidentally. There should never be the slit of the tongue with a parent, because once you release those words, they will accomplish their purpose. For instance, a stray bullet kills. The intention was not to kill. That's how the spoken word works. You cannot recall the spoken word. You must be careful with the words you use on a day-to-day -day basis. You must enhance your working vocabulary. Ensure it is positive. Don't call them the terrible two. Call them the terrific two. Be careful. You see, words have the power to break or the power to make. Words have the power to bless or the power to curse. The Bible says, thou shalt not curse a deaf person. Leviticus 19.14. Why is such a scripture? Deaf people can't hear. It is because of the damage those words will do in you as they destroy the vessel in which they are stored. The Bible says, life and death is in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruits they are love. Proverbs 18, 21. I challenge you as a family, speak the future you want to see in your child, not what you don't want to see. Your words repeated over and over and over again turn out to be the reality in your child. Ben Carson, a lot of kids listening to me here today have read his books like Gifted Hands. Guess what? The mother affirmed him day in, day out. The end result, a child who used to be a knee student ended up becoming one of the most recognized neurosurgeons in the world. The right, Mouse Mundo. The mother kept on telling him, son, you're going to make it. He was an A student. The mother said, you're going to make it. He became an A student, a D student, a C student, finally to an A student, because someone believed in him. Let's recap. We said this. We need 
to speak positively to our children. I've discussed 12 pillars. Just in one minute, I'll recap. Understand your child. Don't compare them with any other person. Number two, protect them emotionally. Number three, learn to train. Lead by your life. Don't tell them what to do. Lead them in what to do. Number four, connect with your child. Deliberately create the time. Say no to some TV hours. Say no to distractions. Don't replace presence with presence. Number five, learn how to communicate. Lower your tone. Label the behavior, not the child. Number six, learn to listen. Because every time you say, you don't learn. When you listen, this child teaches you how to raise him up. Because the best teacher of parenting is your own child. Number seven, empathize with your child. Put yourself in their shoes. They are not at your level. So there are things they can't see so clearly because of their age. Number eight, learn to acknowledge. Look for the good in your child. Don't look at the weakness. Don't be a gifted fault finder. Look for the good. Amplify the good. Number nine, learn to respond, not to react. Sometimes they will do the worst thing you've never known. Even the best of the parents, we can get culture shocks from our children. Retain your cool. Learn to respond. Number 10, discipline your child. Don't miss a chance to discipline, but do it in your privacy. Don't discipline a child in public because you injure their ego. Remember what you praise is more likely to flourish than what you condemn. So number 11, we say learn to reward. Let them know that you reward achievement and progress. Number 12 and the last one, speak what you want to say. The power of the spoken word. In fact, I have a book called The Power of the Spoken Word. You need to look for it in the bookstores. You know, in a football, even in World Cup, sometimes we see two teams going on a draw. And after 90 minutes, they are given some extra 15 minutes. And sometimes they still go on a draw. Then finally, the referee has only one option, penalties. 11 trainers may have faithfully trained for that World Cup for four years, and the goalkeeper drops the ball. The entire team loses the game. Don't be that person who will drop the ball. It's been a great joy and pleasure speaking to you. And I pray that your families will prosper. Learn to bless your children on a day-to-day -day basis. This is your host, Dr. Kenya Juinganga. Thank you very much.